Hi and welcome to Road CC and our YouTube channel. As ever, we're here to help you get more from your bike and enjoy your time riding it. Hey, your body clock is ticking and while you're not getting any younger, you still harbour the same desires to go faster, further, for longer as you did as a whippersnapping young rider. People say you can't beat time and this is true, the clock ticks whether you want it to or not. Past 40, your physical decline tends to come into focus. Sorry, but there it is. Everyone's different, but the average person is at peak physical ability between 20 and 30 years of age. Bone strength peaks at around 35, and after that, things begin to decline. Of course, these are broad generalities, and we're all built differently. But clearly, there's a period from about 30 when physical gains aren't gonna happen overnight or by happy accident. You're gonna have to work increasingly hard for them and make some lifestyle changes and sacrifices, sorry, to maximize the uplift from your hard physical work. So say I'm 40 something, reasonably in shape, but my riding has plateaued because you know life's got in the way of my riding and I've never had a wider fitness regime. So what do I need to do? We talked to a couple of experts in the field and they gave us some great insights for maximizing your fitness as you get older. After that, we'll give you some simple tips to get the most out of your new regime. Right, let's get going. So, for training and competing, what should your focus be? We talked to Simon of Matt Bottrell Performance Coaching about that, and he told us that you usually find with older athletes that if they've got history in the sport with a good endurance in place already, it's their anaerobic capacity and VO2 max that's missing. The very top end is one of the first things you lose as you get older. Now, sprinting is your anaerobic capacity and includes efforts of up to two minutes. VO2 efforts are anywhere from about two minutes to about eight minutes. As these areas of your fitness are in decline, it's worth devoting more training time to shorter, harder efforts. One good way of achieving this is to have a polarized training plan with roughly 70 to 80% of the workouts at low intensity, while the remaining 20 to 30% of sessions are completed at a high intensity. Or, if you want to get the same kind of mix on a normal road ride, just pick a nice hilly route, go hard on the hills and really easy on the rest. So you can adjust your training to help maintain your all round fitness, including your tippy top end. But if you're looking to target an event, you should generally choose longer endurance ones for your best chance of success. The reason for this is that older riders are able to maintain and hold on to their endurance fitness for longer. Where the top end fitness is harder to maintain, the endurance fitness is easier to keep hold of. And that's often why you'll see older athletes doing well in ultra distance events. Recovery is as important as it's always been. So don't go crazy with the ultra hard anaerobic and VO2 focused workouts all of the time. How much recovery you'll need depends on your fitness level as well as your lifestyle. As well as recovering from time on the bike, if you have a stressful and busy life, you need to be conscious about everything you're doing day to day. Simon told us that all the stress you experience can impact your training. So make sure that you're getting the rest that's needed so you can perform when it's riding time. An essential part of the recovery process for physical and mental health is getting adequate amounts of sleep. As we get older, we tend to get less sleep. So with many things going on in our lives, older riders tend to get up early to do training or neglect their sleep pattern. But sleep is one of the things that can really enhance performance. So as an athlete, you need to make sure that you're getting at least seven hours of sleep per night. It's also important to complete a training session at least three to four hours before you want to get some sleep too. In terms of nutrition, Simon was at pains to point out that protein is really important. Although it generally can be harder keeping the weight off as you get older, Simon told us that it's still essential that you get enough carbs if you're training regularly so that you can recover and replace the glycogen that you're losing when you're exercising. But alongside this, protein becomes a more important part of your fueling strategy. As a result of the muscle loss as you get older, it's crucial to get about half a gram per kilo of body weight of protein. That's about four to five times a day. Okay. 
We also talked to physiotherapist Nicola Roberts, and her main point was that strength training and conditioning really helps you continue riding as you get older. It's easier to neglect as you get older, but it's actually the most important time to be doing it. She told us that you can't simply replace strength training with doing more cycling. You need to be doing it off the bike and in the gym. For women particularly, this is crucial. As soon as they hit menopause, for men, it's more into their 50s and 60s. As you get older, you start to lose bone density and muscle strength. And that means that your postural muscles are not working necessarily as well as they might. Strength training and some impact work off the bike helps prevent the loss of bone density. Walking and running do some good, and even activities like tennis and even dancing, anything where you're actually putting impact through the body in some way. But doing loaded strength training, like weight training in a gym, is the best. The muscle pulls on the bone and it encourages osteoblast activity, which creates more bone density. So you should try and do some strength or impact work three times a week. For postural side of things, Nicola adds that other activities such as Pilates and body weight exercises are definitely beneficial. But for making changes to your muscles and your bones, heavier weights are needed. Simon also recommends starting with body weight core exercises and then as you get stronger, moving on to more specific weighted lifts such as squats and deadlifts. Make sure you work on your flexibility too. Spinal flexibility is particularly important, especially if you have a job that involves sitting at a desk all day. So following yoga practices or doing any exercises where you're moving into extension are going to be beneficial. Getting a bike fit and checking up on your riding position on the bike regularly is crucial because as we age, our posture alters. Don't be afraid to make changes that differ from what was optimal when you were younger. If you used to race in a completely aggressive, slammed position, you may want to be a little bit slacker and sitting back a little bit. Paying attention to your gear selection and cadence is also very important as you get older. And Nicola told us that keeping your cadence high helps reduce the risk of injury. Cycling is relatively good for knees in terms of knee joint itself, but you'll need to be careful. And especially so if you're riding indoors on a smart trainer. If you're cycling constantly on ergo mode on a smart trainer, and as you're riding up mountains on platforms such as Zwift, you're likely to be doing low geared, low cadence effort. And these can be really negative for your joints. It's more of a problem indoors because when you're outside on a bike, you just move your body a lot more. You're a lot more dynamic. It's also a sensible idea to change your cassette to one with a larger sprocket to get some easier gears for spinning up steep slopes outside. So there's some advice from the experts and there's loads of great stuff in there to help you improve your training as you get older and hopefully become a little bit wiser. On top of that, here are some simple tips to get the most out of your training time that you have. Firstly, be realistic. You might have a desire to up your riding fitness for a specific reason to join a club, to achieve a long-held dream, to ride a specific event, or just because you want to make the change. So honesty is required at the outset. You simply won't stick to a plan that is aiming too high. So really do be realistic. You know, the Tour de France is probably out of reach for now, but the local club turn or fourth cat road race absolutely is in range, no matter where you're starting from. Having a target is really useful. As an example, I signed up for a seven day mountain bike stage race, the BC bike race at 47 years young. And the minute I signed up to it, everything started to become clearer about what I needed to do to be in shape enough to not just get through it, but to be competitive. It made me schedule my workload to give me more constructive time for training. It made me change my diet for the better. In short, the event became the mold into which I poured my life for the best part of a year. If you're 40 something with a busy work life, kids maybe, then you don't have all week to throw at training. You need to use your time wisely and indoor training is without doubt the most time efficient way of exercising on the bike. So get yourself a decent turbo trainer or rollers and if you can stretch to it, get a smart trainer that hooks up to a virtual cycling environment like Swift. 
there are a bunch out there and the ability to get a ride in when the weather is crap or your work Zoom meeting over ran into your evening ride is really invaluable. Getting some training is, pound for pound, the best way to improve your fitness. There are lots of online virtual coaches available, especially since the advent of COVID-19. They range in price, but most are reasonable and you can explain your goal and they will devise an achievable plan to help you get there in the time allotted. Having that third party to bounce questions to is invaluable and having that big brother watching your progress can work wonders for some. Having a reliable and similarly focused mate that you can call or who call you to go out and get it done can make all the difference to sticking with training. Cycling, for all of its individualism, is a really friendly and communal sport. And if you're struggling to find a riding or training buddy, then try the local bike shop or a local cycling club or group who will often be able to help tie ends together. Telling people, friends, family, work colleagues, even people you meet in queues what you're planning is a great way to barb the process, making it less easy to back out or shrink away when the rubber of your new fitness regime hits the road. People will mention it every time you meet them. How's the training going? You're still working hard for that event? Super impressed with your dedication. The power that this will give you alone is incredible. Use the desire to show them the results of your labor, win, lose, or draw, and imagine yourself saying to them, hey, yeah, I nailed it. Rewards, carrots are definitely better than sticks. When you get a week of eating clean, sleeping properly, hitting your exercise goals, keeping the rest of the normal life plates spinning and generally being a superstar, give yourself a small reward. Try to avoid them being food or alcohol based. These are too easily to be accidentally abused. Instead, try a roll of fresh bar tape or new riding socks or for a month of stellar achievement, a new jersey or shoes. Beyond everything else, remember life happens. Don't be hard on yourself. You're not a professional living in some kind of permanent training camp, freaking out because the two hour window that you've lovingly crafted on a Thursday afternoon has been ruined because the washing machine leaked all over the floor. It's just life. It happens to everybody. So clear up the mess, give your bike a kiss and move on. Tomorrow is another day full of opportunities to get stronger and stay on target. The truth is, as we get older, we do know more about how our individual bodies respond to exercise, effort and recovery and how that applies to riding a bike fast or long. Listening to those lessons learned since you were a youth really will make the difference on how you go about sharpening your cycling fitness. Experience also counts in competition, whatever form that might take for you. It's not always the fittest or fastest rider that's first over the line. In the end, life isn't about an age, a year or a moment. It's a continuous journey. Your fitness is what underpins how much you can enjoy that journey. So think about the work you do as you get older as a positive change for life. So what are you waiting for? Switch off this screen, but not before hitting the like, subscribe and the bell buttons, of course. Tip those Cocoa Pops in the bin, get on your bike, and we will see you out there.